Hello, good morning, Edie. It's good so morning. nice to meet you. I'm so happy to meet you too. Um, I want to say I am doubly delighted to be able to spend this time with you because I am fortunate enough to be depicted on one of your murals, um, the history of South Berkeley. So you cannot imagine what a delight it is for me to spend this time with you. Well, thank you very much. I did a lot of research on uh, a year before I even got made the design because I really was trying to get it right because there were so many heroes in, and sheroes in Ber South Berkeley that it was hard to pick. And so since you were picked, you know, you were you did a lot. All the people that's on there has done something for um, South Berkeley that was amazing. And, well, thank um, you so much I'm for that. Sure for that endorsement and as well as your talent and time and research and dedication to the people of South Berkeley. Well, I live here. <laughs> 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 uh, I care, you know. And so, it shows. Um, and I'm looking forward to meeting you one day too. It will be my pleasure entirely. here in um, 1978 or 79. And um, I left for many reasons. I think the most important reason is that I realized that I was getting older and I didn't know whether I could live in New York City with the cold and with the heat. I didn't know whether I could take that weather, but I love the heat, but I didn't like the cold and the snow and everything. So I said, I'm gonna move to a warmer place. And so, so you left Harlem. And you were about 22. And then did you go from Harlem to Berkeley? No, I, was, I wasn't 22 then. I, I left Harlem when I was about 35 or 39. Oh, okay. I was 39, about 39 or 40. I left Harlem. Yeah. Had you okay. started? Um, when did you start painting? Well, I, all my life I have. I had a mural. My dad people do a mural in the building, 12-story building that I lived in. Everybody did one on the floor. You know, I've always been interested in art. And I've always been interested in being an advocate because when my kids were in school, I was always in a PTA. I was always going to meetings. And I formed a group of boys to come to my house every Friday. And I would give them the same meal every Friday. And they would gobble it up, spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and talk about life and talk about what they can do with their lives and stuff. And I did that for years. Now, was, was art a part of that weekly meeting? No, it wasn't. It was just something that I felt like it was needed for the young right. men in the building. And my kids wouldn't participate. I had um, four kids and they would be in their room doing their thing. Oh. I don't want to come here. <laughs> so my kids never participated, but they were getting what I was giving them, you know, right. that positive information about the future and where you need to go and how important education is and this and that and this and that. Now you mentioned that you were born in Harlem and to a very young mother who then put you in foster care and you I left, that, you I left. That, I don't think that she put me in there. I think that they took her away. They took oh, me away because I she was see. very you know what I mean? I think I do. Mm -hmm. I do. So it was not her choice necessarily. It was something that I don't, I don't think but she was too young to take care of a baby. And they right. realized that, I guess. Right. But something else was going on in my family, you know. So um anyway, so that's what happened. So how did you end up in Berkeley? Well, First, I went to San Francisco and ended up in the Tenderloin, to tell you the truth. <laughs> and how? How did you go, how did you find your way to San Francisco? Well, I met a woman at a political group in New York City, and she lived in San Francisco. And she told me, she said, you can come to San Francisco and live and get an apartment and this and that and this and that. And so... I went to San Francisco and I ended up, I don't know if you ever heard of this hotel. I don't even know if it's still there. It's called the Cadillac Hotel. No. 
on Eddy Street. Uh huh. And I stayed there for about three months, found an apartment on Russell and McGee, stayed there until the drugs hit. Yeah. <laughs> I always leave when, 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 it's, when it gets dangerous. So yeah. was that, when was it that the drugs hit on Russell and McGee? That's in the heart of South Berkeley. Yeah, that was in the heart of South Berkeley and they were going wild. Plus I had a son that was, let me see, I was a 17 and he knew all of the people out there, all the drug addicts and stuff. And I didn't want him to turn out to be a drug addict, right? Right, so right. I what said, year was that? Oh, I don't remember the year. I mean, was <laughs> I it like the 70s or 80s or? It was the 80s. The 80s. Yeah, it was the 80s. Yes. I sent him away to a private school in Seattle, right. Washington. And, oh. Uh, and he went there and graduated from Evergreen College. So I'm so glad I did that. He kicked and screamed and didn't want to go. But I told him, you can't stay around here. There's too many of your friends on drugs and going to prison. Right. And I don't want to have to kill you. And I, I'm not visiting you in prison. So you're going, you going to another area where you can get away from all of this and that's what happened and he turned out to be a very good father a, a very good husband very dedicated to his family and he turned out to be a good person and i'm so glad i made that move right now how uh, tell us tell me a little bit about um the people in your life that made that kind of an impact on you well, um, my grandmother, she lived to be 103. Wow. And I was very close to her. My mother, I kind of admired my mother from a distance, but uh, we were very close. But I admired her from a distance because I was kind of like, you know, that stupid stuff where you gave me away when I was young, you know, right. you know, and right. all that. Like that, but as I grew older, I realized that that was not important, mm -hmm. and we got, and we came together. And um, I didn't meet my biological father until I was thirty years old. Oh, so you know, a long time ago, people didn't tell the truth about what was going on. Yes, you know, like all the time that I was, my mother was married to this man. I thought he was my father, but he wasn't. And so that is I, very much a cultural thing, and and hopefully that's a generational curse that's breaking. I hope that, so. Yeah, and um, and so I met my father when I was thirty, which was shocking. And um, he admitted that I was his child, and then my mother had proof because she was receiving government money from the army, and um. But I met six sisters and four brothers. Wow. Are you close to any of them Most over of through them. the years? Most of them. That's yeah, amazing. I, I would say out of them, maybe two, I'm not as close, but uh -huh. four, four, I'm close to them. They consider me their sister and they have embraced me. And yeah, and I'm the oldest. So, oh. Um, so out of them, you know, so. It's it's good. As good so, as it could be, considering yes. people lie. You know, it could have been more painful. Yes. I, I could have been rejected. My father didn't reject me, and, you know, and the kids didn't reject me. Like, well, and what's so funny about it is that I look like my more like my father than any of his kids. <laughs> My brother, who me and him laugh all the time, he said, he said, when you walk through the door, I thought you was Fred in drags. <laughs> <laughs> so there is no way he could deny you. Oh, uh, Like my, looking in a mirror. I wear a nine and a half shoe. And you know, how, I don't know if you've ever seen how small I am and how short I am. And I got big hands like a, uh, like a man. Uh-huh. So I have his hands and his feet, and I was bow legged. So we <laughs> all down. It, it, I'm just like him, and I look like him too. Yeah. So that's the story on that. Tell me about the um, your artwork and how you really got started in that. Well, like I said, the first 
thing. Well, I always did artwork at home when I was a little girl. I used to love watercolor and I master watercolor. I can do a face with watercolor. I can do anything that, um, you know, I, I could, I can paint with watercolor very well and have complete control over it. And that's hard. I mean, they say that's the hardest, um, um, you know, paint to, to master in painting. But I so have. how did you even decide that you could paint? This is so fascinating to me because I cannot. And well, I, I think you have to have, you know, like who you are today is who you desire to be. And so I think it's the same thing with art. You know, if you desire to paint or you desire to write poetry or you desire to be a singer, and that's what I tell all the kids, you know, no matter what your beginning is, Whatever your desire is, you can do it. You can be it. All you got to do is work at it. It takes a lot of work. You know, it's not saying, oh, I want to be this and I want to be this. You got to go and work at it. And so I started, you know, um, my family was very poor, you know. Um, and I started um, um, painting when I was a little girl with watercolor, I used to go and make my paint in the kitchen. What do you I mean? Used, I had to take ketchup, put some, add some water to it and a little syrup. <laughs> I would take, you know, any colors that was food, syrup and coffee and, you know, and just make my paint. Now I, see, that is something that only an artist at heart would consider even doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I used to, I used to, um, I had this brownie camera that I got for Christmas one year. I used to go out and take pictures of flowers and everything. I never thought that I could draw faces now. That's, that's the strange thing that has happened with me when I came out here because I used to just do landscapes and landscape. That's all I ever did was landscape and my landscapes are beautiful to me and I have sold a lot of my landscapes but when I came out here and I seen the murals because I didn't see many murals in in Harlem right you know what I mean yeah and I, they are now there but they weren't there when I left in 89 or 87 or whatever time I think it was 87 or 88 I don't know anyway um I said, oh my God, I got to learn faces. So I started taking classes and how to draw faces and take buying books and stuff like that and kept on doing it and over and over and over again until I feel like I can paint faces now, you know? Um, and then I could be part of a group of people so that I can paint anything else, but I can't, I don't know if I can paint faces. So anyway, so that was a learning experience for me. I think the most profound thing I found was making new friends and meeting new people here in California, in San Francisco, in Walnut Creek, in Antioch, in Berkeley, in Oakland. I have met some beautiful people. With now, is that a result of your artwork? Are they people that are connected to you through art? Some are, a lot are, but a lot are <laughs> could be a maid or, or, right. or you know, or, 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 or rich or poor. Right. So I'm talking about the heart of the people here is it's just really, really, really strong. It's, a, it's more good people here than it is bad people. Sure. So... Um, what do you think you're best known for? I don't think that, I don't know if people would consider or, or, or I would be best known as an artist. I don't think so. But there's so many artists out there I think that people who know me personally know that I care, that I'm honest, that I that I'll give my last. I'm, 
to somebody that needs help. Like I try to help a lot of people that are that that have not had the opportunity that I have. And um I try to talk to kids and young students, you know. Um, if somebody's having a problem with their child or something, they'll call me and say, you know, would you talk to them? And sometimes some of these kids I've known since they were babies, so they listen. Right. Um, um, you know, and I was good as a counselor in school. So when I lived in New York City, I worked for the Board of Education and I was a counselor. One of oh. the back. Yeah. So I learned my my counseling skills there. I took classes and everything, you know. And um, and learned about it really helped me with my children learning about the stages of growth and what happens and why the anger is there and what's happening why the you know why it's happening with the kids you know and right and and, and how to get them back on their track and um and and have a love for learning right. You know, the first thing I ask the girls is, um, do you want to, when, when you have your children, do you want to be on welfare? <laughs> Absolutely. And they, at me and they be saying, no. I say, well, that's where you at if you don't get this education. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely true. So in addition to being known for your heart of giving, I just took a minute and scrolled through the many, many murals that you've done. How did you get in? How did you get into being a muralist? Because I seen what a muralist can do and I wanted to do it. And so I, I practiced how to make designs. I can't stay up late. I would stay up late to three o'clock in the morning and get up and I had a job to be at 12. I mean, you know, I would just put my, it's like I said that you, it just, no matter what, if you're a doctor, you got to go, I uh, have a niece that's a surgeon. Then she became a plastic surgeon. She was a doctor first, then she became a surgeon and she was in She has that drive. You got to have a drive for something to, um, to actually get there. So tell us a little bit about how how it works. I mean, you know, as, as when we started, I shared with you the delight that I have in being included on one of your murals. But then there are many people, there are many scenes, there are many aspects to it. Tell, tell me how, how it even comes to be. How do you start a mural? Well, first thing I do is I interview the community. That's the first thing that I do. Once I'm asked to do a mural, whether it's tall buildings or skyscrapers or schools or hospitals or clinics or what, I'm going to interview the people. And I want to see what they would like to see. And like when I do a school, I have the kids write down and draw their images of what they think that needs to be done. And then, like I just did King's Middle School. I don't know if you've seen that mural yet. Not yet, no. Yeah, that mural is beautiful to me. And the kids, when they gave me all of this 900 pictures and notes and letters that I had to go through, I had to go and choose because of the wall size and everything, you have to always consider that. Maybe two or three items, or so, uh, or not items, uh, two or three, um, um, I'm trying to find a word, I just went blank. Um, two or three reasons why these kids want this. One, one was the most of it was climate change at King Middle School. Mm -hmm. They wanted to see a change in climate change and they wanted to go and show that what can happen with climate change. And the other thing that I got mostly was social justice. They wanted people, black and white people to get along together. So, and that was, I mean, that was 900 children that I had to go through and give this pile of this and this pile of this. And some of it even was like some of the young girls said, you know, uh, harassment from boys about my body. It has to stop. 
I couldn't put that in there, but that needs to be addressed at that school. But the right. COVID, and then I was going to go over it with the principal and show her the concerns that the girls have. Right. You know, the boys are not respecting their body. Right. <laughs> and so they, they call it cat calls. <laughs> yes, that's that's an old term and it's been going on a long time. Yeah, well, they don't like it. No, nobody likes it. Oh, and they and they. Uh, um, but when the, when the um, I'll take those um, to the to the principal because it was very personal. Right. So anyway, so and then that when I did the King School, so I said I have to see every student in the school. She said, "Well, there's one class you can't see," and I and then she said because these kids do not speak English, and when they first come to the school here. We have a class of non-speaking English kids, and they're taught English in that class. And I said, well, they have to be involved. And so I fought, and I fought, and I fought. And so we had, in the design, I had made steps going up to Martin Luther King. Uh huh. And then I went to her after about a week after I thought about where I can put, how I can get these kids involved. Because I made it my mission that everybody would say, I helped with this, or oh, I gave this, you know, and they would embrace the mural that way. So I asked them, I asked the teacher, could she get the students to write um, their language? You know, I mean, it was, it was about 20 kids in there that spoke different languages. Right. And that's the step. Their language would just do a social justice each issues like peace and it looks so beautiful you gotta go oh. see it. and it tells you what country they come from and how it looks when they write that word justice or peace or equality or preparations or whatever you know that's so, amazing that's that, amazing that, I, I, it, that's, that's another thing too when you work at the schools you get so close to the um to the kids in the community especially the kids. I do anyway, because I love kids. Um, so let me ask you this. And, and you get a chance do to they talk come to, to you and ask you to do a mural or do you see a spot and say a mural needs to go here? How does that work? I never went to look for a mural. Wow. It always comes to me. I never went to look for a mural. Yeah. And I think that well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, another thing too, if I'm doing a mural and a young person or even an old person come up to me and say, well, can I paint with I do it. I tell them my steps and what I do. And I think the most important thing of being an artist, especially if you are painting for someone, is to listen carefully. You know, is to listen carefully like i want this is like a, i wanted to go, don't i want to don't want you to um well maybe i won't name the school i, I wanted a mural that i did i wanted to put colby up there because he had just passed away uh-huh the principal i hate him don't put him up on that stuff. Man. I said, well, why do you hate him? What, what, did, what did he do, you know, that you hate him? You know, you know I hate him. And uh, uh, I don't want him to look on the wall. Well, I, and I just try to talk. I, I said, well, the kids would really like to go in and so I, I don't want him. She said, he done beat up a woman or ran, went out with another one. I said, but that was before. He, he's changed and this and that. This is before he died now. I mean, I think it was after he died. He changed his life, and from what I hear, she said, "I don't want him up there," and I had to accept that. Right, right. I, I can't argue this. You live with this. I don't live with this. Right. So I had to accept that. So listening, very listening, is very important to the people who live there in the community. You know, like sometimes people come into people's community and say, well, we're going to change this. We're going to put this big building on here and we're going to do this. And they never consult the community. And that's not that's not good. No, it's, it's not. not. Good. It's not good at all because the community lives there. You're just visiting, but you have an idea to make money and you're going to go and change the community. And well, it's, when it's you have there. done your research and you listen 
what is the mechanically how does it work then what happens so after that after and then i ask the kids if i'm working in an environment where it's kids i ask them to go and submit drawings and explain to me what the drawing means and i visit each class and i tell them my goal is to go and put what they want up on the wall i also tell them that all of the images are not going to be on the wall and but some of them will and so what i do is so let's just say they they draw an image with a bicycle person it's just a, my imagination with a with a boy on a bicycle and a girl on a bicycle looking at a mural. Let's say I somebody drew that mural, that image. Well, most of the time they just put the wheel there and everything. So the bicycle would be enhanced, like look like a real bicycle, and the people would be enhanced. It still would be the same design, the same idea, but it's just professionally done a little bit more, you know. bring in other painters to help actually always. execute always always and, and different and different um nationalities oh interesting i have a chinese person i always have i have a uh <laughs> i have somebody from russia <laughs> i shouldn't even say that right right a friend and um i have um you know, white, Mexican, African, Latino, whatever, Jewish, you know, because I don't look at the outside of a person. I look at the inside of the person. And, you know, these are my friends and I know them and, you know, so yeah, that, I have all kinds of people and I, I make sure that it's like that. We always laugh because you know, um, racism or, or or people who assume something and don't get it right when it comes to how a person looks or how a person, because every time we're doing a mural, we always laugh and say, who's going to come up and ask who's in charge today? <laughs> so, <laughs> we always exactly. laugh about it. Right? And so they'll go to the other uh, one person. One day we did it this way. When, uh, this man came up and he said, who's in charge here? And then said, I think she is. <laughs> and then they put <laughs> the another white person. Oh, I think she is. <laughs> and by the time they get down to me, they say, Oh, there she is right there. <laughs> <In this place. laughs> we did that one day. <laughs> Boy, it was so funny. He tried to keep a sad face. Yeah, man, didn't know what to say. But when they see me, it's yes. almost like they can't even believe that I'm running this whole show and stuff like that. And that was before things started changing for Black. So you can imagine the reaction when they hear, oh, who's in charge? And they look at me as a senior citizen, you know. Well, and, uh, and not just a senior citizen, but for a uh, Black woman. Yeah. 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 You yeah. know, I, I still marvel at the fact that sometimes when I open my door, the person might say, I want to speak to the woman of the house. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I say, well, you're speaking to her. Mm -hmm. You know, they just always assume that somebody <laughs> else should be living, you know, in where I'm living. Right. Kind of. Right. So I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Both. I think that, you know, from the time that I was born and the Martin Luther King March, I was there and everything. And, you know, I've tried to teach my children. I used to tell them all the time, you know, the Ku Klux Klan is still here. They're just wearing different uniforms. They're in yeah. the school, they're in the police department, they're in the fire department. <laughs> they're yeah. all over. You got to be careful, <laughs> you know. They're just wearing different uniforms, you know. So, um and I used to go and warn my kids a lot to just, to trust. Now, see, the beautiful thing that that I did and showed my kids was that you can have people of different nationalities in your life. You just have to choose the, the, the who they are, not the outside of them, but who they are. So a lot of my, I have four children. Well, I have, yeah, I have five children. A lot of my children 
all have friends of different nationalities because they always have seen them come to my house and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I just didn't, if I liked the person, the person had good habits. He wasn't carrying a gun, <laughs> you know, or right. or anything like that. And had, had good ethic, you know, with their children. And I have a lot of friends that are teachers because um, I've worked in the schools most of my life. And um, um, I worked at Park Day, I worked at Berkwood Hedge for 21 years. Um, I've worked at many schools. I worked at, worked at Crowd and Food. So he's a private school. Mostly I did that because I felt that if these kids, white kids, didn't get to know a black person personally, they had no chance of making it in this world again. And so my job, I felt, was to get them to see me who I was and to care about me. I mean, I got, so, I was just going through my book. I got so many love letters from kids all the way through high school. You know, I have kids that I had when they were in kindergarten that still visit me. Wow. You know, and so it's, it's, I think that the most important thing that, that teachers have to, um, I tell teachers just when I'll be talking to them, I said, when you're in your class with your kids, pretend like you love them to death, even if you don't love them. <laughs> right, right. So show them that you care and that you're loving them and embrace them. They'll work harder if they care for you and you care for them. But if you, you know, know there's, me, there's, yeah. that, there's that quote that says, my teacher thought I was smarter than I was, so I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that whole notion of holding people to a higher standard. Right. And then acknowledging that they've re reached it. Right. 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 So when I was growing up, going to school, the teachers used to beat us in Harlem. I mean, what? actually, they used to beat us. I, I, school was in elementary school. It was, and even when I got to junior high school, they had to tell you to hand, put your hand out and stuff like that. Yeah, they used to beat us. You mean a, with a ruler or a paddle or? With a paddle, with a ruler. Yeah. Yeah. Or make you sit in the chair and face the wall for an hour or something. Like, they were very cruel. And they were mostly white. Mm -hmm. It was hardly no black teachers. I am never, you know, can't even remember a black teacher. And um, so school wasn't a, 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 a wonderful event. The only event that I can remember is some dance they used to do with a ribbon and you go under and in and out and stuff. And I remember practicing for that. And doing was that, that the? That, I think that was the Maypole dance. That the May was the dance. Maypole, yeah. That, right. Um, think of the name. I remember doing that, but that was the only thing that was exciting about school. Everything else was it was terrible. Did you have a teacher ever that you felt inspired you? Not really. Even when I got to taking art school at San Francisco State. Because I like to collage too, you know, I was in a painting class. And so the teacher said, well, you can't collage in here. This is a painting car. I said, okay. So I would make my paint look thicker and make it look like a collage. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, you got to paint thin. I said, I don't think it's right for you to go and try to change what I want to do. You know, and so me and him just, just didn't play. I ended up leaving the class because he wanted to change what I was feeling, you know, and I just feel like that was his right. Um, as although he was teaching me, I I I didn't want to change. I right. didn't want to. I didn't want to change. And I'm glad that I kept that that part of me because I don't think that I would be the way I am now. that I've done, I feel like I'm going to um, hit the top now. You're going to what? I think that I'm going to make a difference 
and what I used to present before. I mean, I've so tell me how that. how is how is it different? It's just the the quality of the drawing, the quality of the paint, everything. It's just the ideas that I have. You know, it's just different. And um, and it's but I'm gonna have a show at the um, historical society. I'm not sure of the date yet. I have to go and get in touch with them and find out the date. But I did accept, and they have uh -huh. a big. They have a big, big room, and I have been doing, since the pandemic, lots of art. So I'll be able to put about 35 pieces in there. So it's going to be different, different than ever before. You know, I didn't want to just put a face in the middle of the canvas like I have been doing, you know, since I've been painting. I wanted to do something different. And so it's, diff it's different. And I did landscapes, which I haven't done in a long time, which came out really beautiful. Wow, I can't wait for that show. Uh, we are going to run out of time and I want to ask you one more question. If you were given the opportunity to do whatever you wanted on whatever space you wanted, what would you do? If I was given the opportunity to go to a space or How, I don't, I don't just understand. free reign free reign what would you do next I guess I would get a studio um I would like to go and travel more I used to travel uh-huh um I would I would mentor teenage children who want to become artists, even junior high school um, kids. My dream always has been to open up a roller skating ring or ice to do the ice skating ring, but something for these kids to do in Berkeley. It's nothing for them to do. Uh, yes, yes. You know, and I, uh, 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 I I can see a big building with a basketball court in it and and a sewing room, and a cooking room, and a, a, a carpenter room, and a clay room, you know, just so these kids can do something, you know, right. active, you know, it's nothing here. It's, it's, it's really nothing here. They that is, and they that's, a, that's an amazing vision, actually, because those teenage years, you know, sort of between 10 and 18 are critical. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we're getting ready to end. And and they deserve that. They should yeah. even have a homework room, a computer room. They deserve that. But that that would that's what I like to see. Well, from from your lips to God's ear, Edie, thank you so much for <laughs> for your time and your talent and your willingness to spend this time with us today. Well, thank Take you. Take good care. And I look forward to, to that exhibit at the Historical Society. And I'm looking forward to meeting you. It will be my pleasure. It will be my pleasure. Okay, bye-bye. Have bye -bye. a good day. Stay safe.